Human influence climate change is making many impacts across the upper Midwest, but one might have you itching to check yourself for ticks. The warming temps have allowed for an increase in reports of the Lone Star tick in Minnesota, one that oddly enough could end up giving you an allergy to red meat. So I talked to the Minnesota Health Department about this odd new species. Can you tell me what is the Lone Star tick? So the Lone Star tick is a species of tick that uh, is traditionally found in, in more of the southern United States. Um, so it's not a tick that we've seen a lot of here in Minnesota. However, in recent years, we have been getting more and more reports. It's still very sporadic, but it's, it's simply just another kind of tick. <laughs> is there anything different about this tick? I have seen reports about some odd symptoms that you can get from it. There is emerging issue, I guess you could say, um, that there is an allergy that's associated sometimes with bites from this tick. It, sometimes people who have a history of bites from this tick can develop um, a very specific kind of allergy to products that contain protein called alpha-gal. It's often found in red meat, so sometimes it's called the red meat allergy. What does this tick look like? I guess it's probably about the same size as a wood tick. They have a very round body. They're kind of brownish colored and they have a bright white spot on their back. Um, hence the name Lone Star Tick. So they're they're fairly easy to identify in that they look different from from the ticks that we usually see here. In when did these start showing up up here uh, this far north? So they've kind of been moving north um, for the last several years, I guess. I'm trying to I don't know offhand the first year that we found them in Minnesota, but just gradually over the years, um, you know, as I said, we're, we're hearing more about them. The good thing is, is we don't seem to have established populations of these in Minnesota yet. Um, we do tick sampling every year as part of our kind of routine activities. We've never found established populations of these ticks. We've even gone out to places, you know, where somebody reports a tick and we go and look to see if we can find any others. And we usually don't. So we think they're probably kind of maybe coming in on a bird and just happening to drop off at the right time or some other, you know, migrating animal or something. Do we have any type of prediction as to whether we think that we'll continue to see more of these going forward in the future? Or? Um, I think we probably will continue to see this just based on what we've seen, you know, happen along the East Coast, as I said, and kind of what often happens or what has been happening over time, just as our climate changes and things like that, we start to see movement of hosts and species. And so my general idea is that we'll probably continue to see more of these and maybe we'll see them more frequently. So if you do happen to find a tick, it's it's been on you, you could tell for a while, what should you do? Generally, we always recommend, you know, if you find a tick and it's attached, remove it as soon as possible. That's, that's step one is get the tick off of you. Um, you can use a tweezers, you can sometimes use your fingers um, and just, you know, slowly, steadily pull that tick out. Um, you might leave some of its mouth parts behind. That's no cause for panic. It's kind of like a sliver. It'll work its way out. So step one, remove the tick from you or your pet. Step two um, is kind of the harder one for people because it's really to just watch and wait. Um, there's not a need necessarily to rush to the doctor or anything like that. The best thing you can do is just, okay, I know I had a tick on me. I may have had others that I didn't find, or if I had a tick, maybe someone else in my family family or the dog had one, we should all just kind of be on the lookout for the next maybe week or two if we start to get sick or have any unusual symptoms, you know, fevers, rashes, aches, anything that you wouldn't really expect to have in the summer or as part of your normal routine. And then that's when it's a good time to reach out to your doctor and say, or your veterinarian, if it's your pet and say, you know, hey, I started having these symptoms. I did have this tick and we had gone hiking or camping or whatever. And then that just helps them kind of put the whole picture together. So the watching and waiting is, is that kind of next step, but it's the one people don't like because it involves waiting. So moral of the story here is either they're slowly migrating up here because of the warming climate and they just haven't, you know, made the full migration to populate up here yet, or our winters are strong enough that we might actually luck out and we're killing them before we get a population up here. It's just too soon to tell which it is. Yeah, that the weather might not allow them to sustain, but yes. with climate change over time, that could also change. Yes, an interesting thing, of course, again, associated to human influence climate change.